In this lesson, we're going to take a look at sends, returns and buses. Send and returns are completely different to inserts. If we use an effect as an insert, what we're doing is we're breaking the routing of the signal, sending it to the effect, then sending that entire signal out to the mixer. With sends and returns, we're effectively copying the signal and sending a portion of that signal out to the send, and then we're returning it back once it's been affected and then blending it back in with the original signal. Currently in this set we have three return tracks, A, B and C, which we can rename and put audio devices on. We can also delete these by right clicking and selecting delete, and create new ones by going to the create menu and clicking create return track, or by using the keyboard shortcut command alt and T. Notice for every return track created we get another send knob, this allows us to send the signal to the return tracks. A general rule of thumb for using effects as inserts or send returns is that if the effect adds gain or affects the track's dynamics, such as EQs and compressors, then it should be used as an insert. If it's a time-based effect, it should be used on a return track. This is because with time-based effects such as reverbs, delays and choruses, we want to keep both the affected version and the original signal so we can mix the two together. Remember though that rules are there to be broken, so experiment and see what works for you. If we have a look in device view, we can see exactly what devices or chains of devices we have on our return tracks. We can send any of our tracks to the return tracks using the send pots in session view, or by using the send boxes just below the track volume in arrangement view. If we send one of our tracks to the different returns, we can start to hear the affected signal. We can also solo the return track to hear just the affected signal, as well as mute the return track with the mute button underneath. If we have a look in session view, you may also notice the yellow post send buttons above the master fader. This means our sends are set to post fader, meaning that the signal is sent to the fader after the mixer. This is useful because it means the send volume will automatically be set relative to the fader volume. If we click the post fader button, we can set the sends to be pre-fader. This now means that the send levels and volume faders work completely independent of each other. Meaning even if the volume fader is set to zero on the mixer, we'll still be able to hear an output from the return if the sends turned up. Next we'll have a look at buses. These are often referred to as mix or summing buses, as they're often used for summing tracks together for more control over mix down levels and also for grouping effects and processing. Another main function for mix buses is they allow us to control the volume of groups of sounds. This is useful if you already have automation on a mixer fader, however I strongly advise you use a utility plugin and automate the gain parameter. Doing it like this frees up your mixer fader for tweaking, for tweaking and adjusting volumes during the mix down phase. To create a new bus, we simply create a new audio track. We can do this using the command and T shortcut. We can then select which tracks we want to sum to our mix bus and highlight them. We can now change all of their outputs from master to our new mix bus in the output section. At this point, it's wise to rename your mix bus to avoid confusion later on. We should also set the monitor mode to in. This effectively makes our mix bus into an auxiliary by making sure it always receives the audio signal from the other tracks, irregardless of if the record arm is on or not. We can now mute and solo this mix bus to mute or solo the audio of all of our bus tracks, as well as having total control of the volume of the group track. Remember that the signal flow will now go from these tracks to the bus and then to the master. You can think of this as an imaginary signal routing line going into the top of the mix bus channel from your relevant tracks. This can help you remember. We can now also affect and automate this mix bus. A popular example of this would be to use a glue compressor on the group to glue the signals together and make them sound more cohesive. To recap, in this video we've covered the difference between inserts, sends and returns, how to use a send and return, pre and post fader returns, and finally mix and summing buses. 